when I joined uh, LiveRay as a uh, sales engineer here in the Netherlands. Um, I basically needed a, a photo for my company profile. Um, all I had was uh, wearing suits, uh, which didn't match the company culture, so I used my avatar. Um, but to, to be honest, I actually started six months without any library experience or portal or CMS or whatsoever. So maybe it should have looked like this. Um, so without any experience, I'm here at the DEF CON. Um, so you may be thinking, okay, what can I learn here? Um, but I do bring some other knowledge with me. I've been working on uh, search projects for over uh, 15 years uh, using commercial uh, search solutions, but also open source like Solar and Elastic. Um, and I was ha very happy to see that LiveRay today is using Elasticsearch, well, more or less out of the box. And as mentioned this morning by uh, Zeno, um, your job is to solve problems. Um, that's what I've been doing uh, at least uh, the last uh, 20 years. And with this in mind, uh, let's discover how we can establish fully automated publishing by using uh, automated tagging and uh, publishing using the uh, openness of library and the rich functionality of Elasticsearch. So to start, uh, why do you want to tag your content? Um, there are many reasons for tagging your content. Uh, People can remember those articles with the same text more easily. For instance, uh, a Dutch newspaper recently changed their uh, look and feel of the website and they added text to the articles they present. Um, so it's easier to remember them but also to navigate to uh, other articles. And when searching, you can guide your visitors uh, by using facets. So you put the text in the facets. Um, or you add the tags as content uh, to the articles so they can find them using the keyword search. Uh, to get a better ranking in um, Google, for instance, you can use those tags as well uh, to improve your uh, SEO. Um, to easily link related articles, of course there is some functionality to link uh, articles currently in uh, uh, LiveRay. Uh, but doing it automatically will make it more uh, convenient for your editors and also more consistent. And to automatically display, you can make use of the asset publisher and use tags to automatically select a set of articles. So let's have a look at the asset publisher. Move that over here. So as you can see, I uh, prepared a uh, simple site where I basically publish uh, sports articles. And in this page, it's about uh, Formula One. And if I want to add a new uh, asset publisher on my homepage, I have to log in first. So I can add here a, a new asset publisher. and I prepared a configuration for it. And now I modify it a little bit. Let's see. So currently it's selecting uh, all the articles using F1. So I'll remove this one and then say, because it's on the home page, I want a generic topic and then just save it. And now you see that some of the articles that I tagged with sports are shown on this page. 
But what you also see is that I didn't give all the articles the sports page because maybe I was sloppy or lazy. Um, so how should we improve this? So let's first have a look at uh, manual tagging. Um, for this, I prepared a little text. So normally, uh, if you add a, an article, we go to the web content. I don't know what's happening, but... So we can basically add a new content item, so in this case, just basic web content. Well, it's hanging. Maybe the network is a bit slow, but... <laughs> All right. So I prepared this, uh, this content. And now what you would normally do is uh, go to the tags uh, location and then simply add your own tags, which can be from coming from a list or uh, just add your own. So in this case, um, well, let's add one for uh, Formula One. Then we save it. And now it should be shown on the Formula One uh, page. Um, and there it is. So it's up here. But as you would normally see is that uh, editors choose the, the tags to publish their uh, content. Um, maybe uh, they don't use the same tags every day because they change insights. Or if you get a new editor, they will use a different tag as well. So to do it automatically, um, we can simply go here again, uh, go to the content. And now I'm going to use the outer tagger that uh, I created. So I'll go here. It more or less uh, looks the same. So you still have the same uh, fields that you have to fill in. Oh, that's not the whole text. So let's put the title up. And the trick is here in this tag. So I have added an auto tag, and the module that is doing the auto tagging will look at this auto tag tag, and then will be triggered. So what it will do, it will uh, look in this case only at the title, but you can extend it to any part of your content, so also the content itself, or maybe some metadata, or an attachment, and use that as input for the uh, auto tagger. So let's see how it goes. So we say publish. And now it looks the same, except that it has added out of tagging. So in this case F1 and sports, because I created two rules, one for F1 and one for sports, looking at certain words that are in this uh, title. And now if we go to the uh, sports homepage, for instance,
we see that the article which was just added is also shown here, but also on the F1 page. So we see it two times because the first time I uh, just added one tag. So let's go back. So we did this. <coughs> so what I would like to know is um, how many of you have experience with uh, building things in Livery? Yeah, that's what I expected. Um, and how many of you have uh, worked with Elasticsearch? Okay, a little bit less. And then a specific functionality in uh, Elasticsearch called Reverse Query or Percolator. All right, that makes sense. Um, so why the last question? Well, basically for auto tagging, I used the Percolator functionality in Elasticsearch, which is basically reverse querying, uh, to do auto tagging. Um, to understand how the reverse query works, let's first have a look at how you normally work with Elasticsearch and build indexes. So when you start with a, a search application, you basically start with an index. And then the next thing you will do is add documents to the index. And the Elasticsearch will um, pick all the words and store them in a specific uh, format. And then you start sending in uh, queries. And what you normally see is that the documents um, in the index are there, well, maybe for weeks, months, or years, or maybe even longer. And the queries are there just for milliseconds. So you can see them coming in and they make hits. So you send in a query and they will find all the right documents for you. So that's how a normal query works. So next step is to look at how a reverse query works. So we basically start with the same thing. Let me find my mouse again. So in this case, we also start with an index, but instead of storing documents, we start storing uh, words or queries. So we can put in queries like Livery or DXP or Platform, and then the next step is to take your content and send it to the reverse query engine to find the matches. So this way it's the other way around. And you can keep them sending in, and in this case, the queries or terms are stored there forever, and the documents are more or less uh, dynamic. So what I built as a uh, proof of concept was the following. Um, first, I started with building a web service for auto tagging, just to figure out, OK, can I do this or not? Uh, and I built it in uh, Spring Boot. And later on, I added uh, a component, an OSGI uh, component or module uh, that will basically interact with uh, the web service. The AutoTag web service will uh, uh, receive uh, the text, then connect to Elasticsearch, send it to Elasticsearch, and then it will re retrieve uh, all the uh, business rules that it, met, that it matched. Um, in this case, I used Elasticsearch as a standalone application um, together with uh, Livery DXP so for the demo. And before we continue looking into the, the code, um, I want to explain a little bit on uh, what you need to set up in uh, Elasticsearch because you need some kind of mapping for all the fields that you want to match. So in this example, I've um, kept it quite simple. I have just one field, which is called the, the content field, and it has a type, and the type is string. So this is pretty straight, straightforward. And when I start creating an index with a certain type, I use this mapping. Then the next step is that if you are going to create a business rule or percolate rule, uh, you need to uh, match those field types. So in this case, I created content, and I, in my rule, I'm also looking into content. And in this case, I'm looking for the 
two terms, bonsai and tree. And once I start sending in documents into Elasticsearch to find the, the tags, I have to make use of this field. So in this case, I send in text, like uh, I like keeping a bonsai tree in the field called content. So that's what you need. This is pretty straightforward, but you can make it much more complex. So for instance, uh, Standard string fields are analyzed by uh, Elasticsearch, but uh, maybe sometimes you want a different language to use. So you can use uh, specific analyzers, uh, like Dutch or English or whatever language you need, or the type of tokenization that you uh, want to use in, uh, within Elasticsearch. Uh, you can use field types like date and specific formats of dates that you want to use, or uh, things like uh, numbers, like a long. So for the Spring Boot web service, um, it's basically built on top of two classes. I have an Elastic Service, which will do all the interaction with Elasticsearch, and the REST controller for creating uh, the endpoints. So let's have a quick look. Can you see this? Um, let's see, okay, so we have the uh, Elastic Service, which is interacting with Elasticsearch. And first of all, we need to have a connection with uh, Elasticsearch, so we basically use the transport client, we give it the cluster name, uh, we give it the host and the port, and then we are able to connect with Elasticsearch. So that's the first step. Then to get a list, um, we can basically do a search on the percolator type. So that's a special uh, type within uh, Elasticsearch that you can use. And in this case, I do just do a match all to find all the, the rules that I have. But you can also select certain um, queries. So. so this will give me a list. Um, to add a query, I also added some uh, methods here. And in this case, it's uh, using the, the query builder, and you can define your query as simple or as complex as you would like, and then simply store it in the percolator type. Now, for the REST controller, um, I'm basically using this Elastic Service. Um, which made it a little bit simpler for me to, uh, to manage. So here I have an endpoint, which is uh, the list endpoint, and it will basically use the method getList to uh, get a list of the rules I have uh, put in there. So let's have a look at uh, some of the endpoints, how they work. So to do that, I... Uh, use Postman, and Postman is a client for, well, basically running uh, tests on your endpoint or trying things out. Uh, I'll go. Oh. So this is, is one of the uh, endpoints. Um, as you can see, it's, well, I hope you can see it. Um, it's the REST tags list, so this will give me an overview of all the rules that I've currently stored in my uh, system. So you will find several things. Let's see, it looks like it's hanging. Okay. Try again. <coughs> well, normally it's uh, a little bit faster, but uh, let's see.
Okay, well. So now it's better. Um, so as you can see, I have uh, uh, several queries here. So this one um, is looking for terms like pension, retirement. Um, here we have the F1 uh, query, uh, which is looking for terms like Cubica, Vettel and Verstappen. And uh, the sports one is looking for terms like Formula One and uh, soccer. So basically with this, um, we can uh, build it a complete uh, solution. Let's go back here. For the uh, service module that I created, um, at first, uh, because I didn't know any of OGI or Live Array whatsoever, I thought, okay, well, that's going to be complex. Um, but actually, I figured it out uh, quite easily. <coughs> so, sorry. Let's have a look. So in this case, I have the Elastic Tagger. And it basically contains of three methods. Um, one was for um, interacting with the web service, which was a fairly basic implementation. Um, maybe there are some better ways to do it, but it worked for me. Um, then I have a support method to look at, OK, uh, if you rem remember, I added a auto tag tag. And this one is basically looking at whether you have it or not, and then return a, a boolean and this is where it all happens so um, I implemented the uh, model listener um, it's looking at in this case I'm looking at specific uh, type so in this case a journal article but you could use this um, at all the uh, assets that you have so for instance if you have an image and you would like to use the title for the image to be uh, used as, as tagging input, you can do that. Or maybe a blog or wiki, you can uh, also do that. Um, and here I basically send the text, um, in this case the title, um, to the web service, and then I receive the tags and I will add them to the uh, specific asset. Let's see. Oh, that's the wrong one. Looks like I have a bit of a fight with my presentation. So other use cases for this uh, uh, module or auto taking uh, possibilities. Um, if you get a lot of content by content providers, um, you can use the auto taking to automatically tag all this content and thereby automatically publish this content to your website without any manual um, actions. Uh, you can tag content in your document and media library automatically. So by simply creating rules, people can drop in their Word document or PDF document, and you can take out this text and send it to the auto tagger, and it will automatically tag those, uh, those items. Um, it's not only about tags, but also about categories. So if you would like to use that, it's also possible. Uh, you can send push notifications to mobile apps or browsers. Um, I also have a, a small demo on how you can generate uh, specific email alerts based on what a user is interested in. So they create their own rules and then you send an email, okay, we got this new article which is about the subject you are really interested in. 
um, out of forwarding to social media. So if you find certain uh, hashtags, you can directly send it to, uh, to Twitter, for instance, by using the auto tagging. Uh, and also out of detecting language. So you can say, okay, I create a rule where I use uh, words that are quite common in a certain language, or maybe use it as a way to find bad words, so in uh, th things like uh, comments. So this is the personalized email. Uh, maybe if you want to see it, I can show it afterwards, because my time is running out. Um, I've put the code on uh, GitHub. Um, I also have some blogs on uh, liveray.com and I also provide some uh, videos on YouTube. So, I think that's it. All right, thanks, Jan. Thank you.